Welcome. It's my pleasure to welcome you to today's Forum Onslow. I'm Cindy Edwards, Division Chair of Governmental Affairs for the Jacksonville Onslow Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber presents these forums periodically to inform citizens on topics and initiatives that impact our community and region. Today's program is presented in partnership with the 2nd Marine Expeditionary Force. This Forum Onslow program is possible because of our sponsors, Duke Energy Progress, the Jacksonville Daily News, facilities provided by the City of Jacksonville, and today's broadcast is made possible by the City of Jacksonville's media services. Thank you all for your support. Please welcome Bob Dupuy to the podium for a word from our sponsor. Bob is a federal account executive for Duke Energy Progress. He also serves as a fellow board member and is chairman of the Military Affairs Committee. Well, greetings, everyone. And on behalf of Duke Energy, I'm excited to partner with uh, the city and the Jacksonville Daily News and, and certainly 2MEF to bring this exciting program. Uh, the success of our Marines, the success, the success of our Marine Corps, and certainly the success of our community are inexplicably and undeniably intertwined. And I'm excited to hear what General Castelvi has for us today. So to introduce the General, Mr. Dan Oliver, the Chairman of the Governmental Affairs Committee for the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. Good morning. It's my pleasure and honor to introduce a gentleman who is far better known than I am, so a uh, daunting task. But I'd like to uh, let you know on behalf of the Government Affairs Committee that uh, we're honored to have this be one of our forums for the year and pleased that our sponsors were in agreement with that. Uh, it's my uh, pleasure to introduce General Castelvi to you today, uh, Brigadier General Robert F. Castelvi. General Castelvi earned his commission in 1984 upon graduation from University of Illinois. Uh, he earned, excuse me, his career includes command at several levels from platoon to, uh, pardon me, platoon to command, uh, commander of a company and uh, brigade. He is battalion. He's also been chief of staff at several levels uh, in the service and, and uh, has demonstrated his leadership skills at several, uh, at several opportunities. Most recently, General Castelvi was deputy commanding general for operations, combined joint force land component command in Iraq, operation inherent resolve, as well as commanding general of Marine Corps installation East in Camp Lejeune. Uh, and that is where most of us had the opportunity to meet and, and uh, gain great respect for the general. Among other courses that uh, the general has taken since his graduation from uh, the university, the uh, Marine Corps Command College, Command and Staff College, the School of Advanced Warfighting. He's also earned uh, master's degrees in, from the university, Marine Corps University, the National Defense University, and the Capitol College. General Castelvi has been recognized for his leadership skills uh, in multiple cases. He's also been uh, received several personal honors and awards throughout his career. We welcomed the Deputy General of TUMEF and Commander of 2nd Marine Expeditionary Brigade, Brigadier General Robert Castelvi. General. Thank you. Dan, thank you for the warm introduction, and uh, and and uh, Cindy Edwards again, and uh, and Bob Dupuy for for Duke Energy and the sponsorship of this of this forum, and and of course to the chamber. Um, as uh, as Dan mentioned, I am I am Brigadier General Castelvi. I'm the Deputy Commanding General of of TUMEF and the Commanding General of Second Marine Expeditionary Brigade, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, a new initiative, a new force preservation initiative that we launched here at TUMEF a few months ago, and it's called Protect What You've Earned. And, it's, uh, and it aims really to generate a conversation, a conversation between Marines, senior leaders, family members, uh, and the community about taking proactive steps, proactive steps and really encouraging positive behavior. Um, and it's all about decision making, good decision making, uh, to safeguard what is most important for a Marine? Protect what is most important for that Marine. His career, his rank, uh, 
um, his respect. Um, and not have that lost uh, as a consequence of, of an alcohol-related incident. So I throw, throw up here the, uh, the, the different logos of the, of the MEF and different subordinate commands of the MEF. This has been fully embraced by our, by our MEF. Uh, two MEF, 2nd Marine Expeditionary Brigade, 2nd Marine Logistics Group, 2nd Marine Division, 2nd Marine Air Wing, our three Marine Expeditionary Units, uh, full, and it is now soon to be incorporated into a Corps-wide program. The Commandant of the Marine Corps, uh, General Neller, uh, shortly after assuming his position as Commandant, uh, made, made the decision that this program is now going to go, go full-wide. Right now it is, it is fully embraced here within, within TUMEF, as well as uh, for, from our base and our, our regional installation. Uh, command here, MCI East, as well as all of our training education commands that are that are subordinate to us. So you heard me make a reference to force preservation. Uh, what is pr force preservation? And uh, and force preservation is really all the programs that preserve and enhance the physical, the mental, the emotional, the spiritual, the moral health of what is our most precious asset in the Marine Corps. That's the U.S. Marine. And uh, what, what it is, is all those programs that, that ensure that our Marines are ready. We can have great material readiness, but our Marines need to be personally ready for all the challenges that are, that are ahead of them. So you look at, you, you look at uh, different elements of, of, uh, of force preservation, and there are several lines of effort. There's behavioral health, um, Protect what you've earned is a, is a significant piece of that behavioral health piece. It's, uh, it's our counter drug campaigns. It's, uh, it's suicide prevention and substance abuse. Um, under equal opportunity, it's, it's ensuring that we have, we've got a proper equal opportunity climate. Uh, our workshops, our training support, our, our incident response and reporting. Under safety, it's all those programs that we have that, that ensure the, the ground and, and aviation safety, duty and off duty safety programs, as well as sexual assault prevention and response. And ensuring that all these programs are going to be properly, properly uh, uh, integrated uh, and protect what you've earned is incorporated in each one of our lines of effort when it comes to force preservation. So why this campaign? Why did we do this campaign? Well, it, it all comes down to decision making. Uh, and what we found is an alarming number of decisions uh, were being made, not just under the influence, I'm talking bad decisions, were being made not just under the influence of alcohol, but under the, uh, under the excessive uh, and abuse of, of alcohol. And, uh, and what we found as well is that, uh, that excessive drinking was had become a gateway or vehicle to all kinds of misconduct and, and mishaps. We all we all know about DUIs, DWIs. Uh, we also found that of all the services, Marine Corps, the Marine Corps, Marines led with the highest rate of excessive alcohol and binge drinking. Uh, we saw a tie-in in alcohol and other in other areas of misconduct. Uh, Thirty percent of domestic violence and spousal abuse. In 30% of those cases, we found that, that alcohol was involved, excessive alcohol use was involved. 57% uh, of, of offenders and victims of sexual assault under, uh, under uh, influence of alcohol or excessive alcohol. 40% um, of, our, of our suicides and, uh, and, and suicide attempts. In 40% of the cases, we found that alcohol was, uh, was, was a factor. And that excessive alcohol uh, can make a, a good decision maker make a bad decision. It could make a bad decision maker make grotesque decisions. So we formed, the fo we formed focus groups. We started studying this. Uh, we brought focus groups of, of, of several hundred, almost thousands, thousands of Marines within, within TUMEF to get an understanding of of the problem. And what we found was, was, was surprising is that six out of seven Marines 
actually drink responsibly and make responsible decisions. But the, within that focus group, we found that the Marines thought that the, the, the number that were making irresponsible decisions and, and binge drinking and, and uh, excessively drinking was actually much higher than that. And, and what, we're, what we found was that it's a small number, small number of folks. Um, we also found in our, we also looked at our focus groups and, and found, we wanted, we wanted to figure out why. why. Why good Marines were making the right decisions. What was inspiring them to make those right decisions. Um, and it was about protecting what they earned. Um, and, 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 that protect, and that for an individual was, di you know, was different for each individual. But there were some common threads. What they earned, they earned that Eagle Globe and anchor. Uh, it was protecting the career. Uh, and it was protecting the family welfare, the welfare of their family. Um, it may have been protecting the future benefits that they would have um, coming out of a, a, a successful enlistment uh, with an honorable discharge or, or an honorable career. Um, it was about respect. Um, we also, we also found that, uh, that, that the forum allowed us, the, the, the focus groups allowed us an opportunity to be able to, to make, make Marines even more aware of the programs that were out there for them. So let them know that for those that, that, uh, for those that need help, that what, what resources were available. So that's why we thought that a good fresh campaign like this was gonna, was gonna be uh, effective for us. So, what are the goals and mission, missions of the campaign? Uh, the, again, the, the campaign is about encouraging positive behavior. And it's less, it's less about demonizing alcohol, but about the poor decisions that are being made with the excessive use of alcohol and excessive, excessive uh, abuse of, of, of the product itself. Less about demonizing it. Um, it's about enhancing readiness. We tie, we, tie, we tie this campaign to our combat readiness and enhancing our combat readiness. We, we decrease the number of behavioral problems both on and off duty. Um, we enhance the long-term health and well-being of the service members. Again, it, it's about enhancing the, 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 the physical, the mental, the emotional, and spiritual health and moral health. Uh, we, increase the, we increase the awareness of, of, of the resources that are available. And finally, it's about promoting a culture, a culture, it's a positive mindset, a positive culture concerning responsible decision making. We link this back to the decisions. Uh, and, in, and, and by, doing so, by doing so, again, we're enhancing our own combat readiness. So the timeline. We started in February with, with, with the initial focus groups, uh, July and August, we, we launched this camp, from July to August, we launched this campaign. Uh, heavily marketed throughout our MEF, uh, over 4,000 Marines and sailors attended different speech, speaking events on alcohol abuse. We we had numerous town halls um, and and formation kind of vetting, uh, venues to be able to, to spread the, spread the word on this. Uh, on the 25th of August, uh, then Commanding General of of, of two MEF, General Bidler, brought community community leaders to, to his residence to solidify those, those critical partnerships. Uh, September, we, we, we started putting out uh, protect what you've earned billboards placed in high traffic areas. You've seen a number of them throughout, throughout the area. I'll, show, I'll, sh I'll have a slide that actually shows some of the different locations of, of where we have them. And, uh, and in October, uh, as, General, as General Neller became commandant, he made the decision to make this thing core-wide. Uh, and where do we see it from here? Uh, th this will, the campaign I think we think is going strong. It, it, will, it, it will morph into different, in, in the different generations of this. Um, we think by April this year, we'll have Gen 2 of the Protect What You've Earned campaign. Um, and again, we'll go through a very full scale um, marketing, marketing uh, design and, uh, and, and outreach on all our efforts. All right, so community involvement. Uh, the, com the, the, the response within this community has been, has been awesome. Um, very well received. 
Um, because I think, I think, again, this message resonates. It's about decision making. It's about, it's, it's about uh, supporting our Marines with the right resources they need to be able to make those decisions, but uh, encouraging them to make those right decisions. So we've, we've got flyers all over town. We've got, you've probably seen stickers and, and posters at different areas. You've certainly seen some of the billboards. Um, we're, we're getting this as part of the conversation. Um, promoting responsible decision making by increasing the awareness that we have out there uh, about reckless behavior. So we're, we're going to continue bringing in guest speakers, uh, facility tours, get people to understand where this, where this campaign is going. Um, and, we're, and we're continuing to expand our, our, our partnerships. Uh, it, it's not uncommon to, be, to go to a restaurant or a bar here and see, and see a Protect What, what You've Earned uh, uh, poster displayed. Uh, we've got everything from, from bumper stickers. I brought even a coaster today. Uh, we're putting these all over the, all over the place. So, um, and we'll make sure that we continue to, to, uh, to distribute those. Restaurants and bars, dry cleaners, uh, grocery stores, anywhere where Marines congregate and come together. We want them to see images of this campaign, to get those, those kind of reminders out there. You know, before, before you start making, taking down, going down that path of making a bad decision, um, using alcohol or any other means to make that, to, to, as a vehicle to, to make that decision. Before you do that, think twice. Think twice about all, all that you've, all you've earned. What are you going to try to protect? Family programs and resources, we have weaved Protect What You've Earned into every one of our uh, family uh, readiness programs and every one of our uh, force preservation programs, from operational stress, certainly sexual assault prevention and response, uh, our family advoca advocacy program, chaplains, chaplains are on board. Uh, we're, we're getting this as part of the conversation. Uh, our military family life consultants, certainly our family readiness officers are, are, are talking about this uh, every opportunity they get. It's in our community counseling centers and, and our Naval Medical Center, uh, Camp Lejeune, has got it within the medical treatment facilities as well. Again, remind, reminders, have that conversation. Have that conversation and, uh, and, and, and try to encourage positive decision making. So, some of the billboard locations that we have out there, I mean, we've got them out as far as I-40 and I-95. Um, and there are diff we, we've got a couple different versions of the billboards that we have out there. I'll show you that in the next couple slides. Um, certainly on Lejeune Boulevard and Western Boulevard, as soon as you leave the gate, when you come on Camp Lejeune or you come on any of our installations within, within Marine Corps Installations East, you're going to see Protect What You've Earned uh, references everywhere you turn. And here's what one of the billboards say, and this one, this one appeals to um, protecting the career that you've earned, protecting the rank that you've achieved. So a couple good images on this. You know, certainly the protect what you've earned, protect what you've earned is, uh, is up there. It's for Marines and sailors. We put every rank officer and enlisted rank on there. Um, we're, we're looking at trying to prevent, prevent, prevent misconduct at all levels. Um, and we remind them to keep their honor clean. The next one's a much simpler one. This is protect what you've earned. What, what, what I like about this one as well is that it kind of leaves it to the individual to, to think about what he's earned and what he needs to try to protect. It may be his career, it may be his family. Very simple. Um, what, you know, what, what is it you've earned and what ought you try to protect? A couple other, couple other posters you'll see, you'll see around, uh, around town. One of them, again, reminds folks that, hey, it's six, seven, six out of seven Marines and sailors drink responsibly. We're telling them, don't be the odd man out. Don't be the odd Marine out, you know. That, that is in, encouraging positive behavior, encour encouraging those that are in the majority, and we think they're, in, and, and they are in the majority. That's 85% of our Marines, we have found. Uh, the middle one, 85% of Marines say they drink responsibly, don't be that 15%, level up. It must be some kind of a Pac-Man reference or something there, um, a kind of a cart, but it, it seems to resonate, and, and it draws your attention to colors, and hopefully it draws your attention to reading what's on there. 
And then the one on, uh, one on the right that we have has a, has, has, has a bottle of beer and uh, with, with a label on it that says protect what you've earned. We want them to think about that. Uh, again, we're not demonizing the alcohol. We're demonizing the excessive uh, abuse of that alcohol that leads you to make those bad decisions. So drink responsibly. We're not saying don't drink. We're saying drink responsibly. And that's our campaign. We think we're, we're very proud of it. Um, it, it core, wide, core wide campaign, but uh, it started here at 2MEF. Um, and we've got no, co we, we do not have a copyright on this phrase. Uh, you'll, you'll, f you'll, you'll find that the Navy uses a very similar, uh, uh, um, has, a very, has a similar campaign they call Keep What You've Earned. Um, nothing wrong with that camp, nothing wrong with, with Keep What You've Earned. We thought, we thought Keep had much more of a passive uh, connotation to it. Protect is a little bit more. Take proactive steps. Protect it. You've earned this. It uh, just sounds a little bit more Marine-like. <laughs> yeah. So with that, folks, I'm, I'm here to entertain any questions I, I may have. Um, and and I, I promise on, on the next visit, uh, we'll bring, we'll bring some, some swag out here for you as well. Um, bring some posters for you to have, have around, some bumper stickers, maybe a coaster or two. Um, so we can all protect what, what we've earned. So thank you very much. General, we've actually had some folks uh, coming in from the outside with some tweets and questions and emails. If, you, if you're up for taking a few questions. I'm ready. All right. Uh, the first one is, will this be the first of many to come? Uh, and I think they're talking about the, the visualization and, and, and getting this out. To folks, and uh, they're very interested in ensuring these types of communications are ongoing for the health and well-being of our Marine Corps and outside the gate. So, I'd say a positive comment and a question all rolled into one. Uh, it, th there will be more. We're going to continue to evolve this campaign. Uh, we're going to see it. We're, we're going to see a Gen Two come out. Um, we may start targeting uh, certain elements of misconduct that we have that we want to be able to that tie a little bit more directly to protect what you've earned. And that's what I think you can see. You'll, you'll probably see come, come the April time frame. Okay. Uh, let's see. I applaud the efforts, time, and resources. The Marine Corps has uh, recognized the need to take the lead on this epidemic. Hopefully this vision of changing a culture will spill over to the civilian sector. God bless America and our freedom. Well, thank, and, and, no, no copyright on this. We, we, I, know, I know Chief Yanero is here. Chief, Chief's using it within the, uh, within the police department as well. Um, we, we think this can be part of a conversation, uh, and, and we hope it becomes part of the lexicon. Uh, you know, we, we, we have, you know, you're familiar, Bob, with very, very salutations and greetings that we have as Marines. Uh, we, we, you'll commonly see now as, as Marines are, are, uh, are, are departing, uh, from one Marine to another might say, hey, protect what you've earned. You know, there's Semper Fidelis and there's, hey, protect what you've earned. And it's just that little reminder that we want to have, Marines have, that, hey, you've earned something, and, uh, and just watch, watch the decisions you're making when you go out that gate. That's all the questions we have, General. All right. Thank you for being here with us. Oh, any questions from here? Yeah. We do Please. have one more question. Oh. This program will grow to a uh, to focus on recovery. Please. Great, great question, and uh, it will. Uh, by having this conversation, by having this conversation with with a Marine on, uh, on on making the right decisions and protect and protecting what he's earned, we want to be able to bridge that into the resources that are available. So. Recovery being a piece of, the, of those resources, so we want the, the we want to have these conversations with Marines that maybe that maybe are they're trying to protect what they've earned. They know that they need to protect what they've earned, but they need help. They need some other resources available. So it's, hey Marine, you need to protect what you've earned. Let me let me help you. Uh, sounds like you, need, you may need some help. Here's some of the resources we have available for you, and allows us to be able to reaffirm 
the host of resources we have to help, to help them correct whatever behavior it is and get the kind of help that they need. So we have another. It says, will the internal structure be more of a coaching mechanism uh, in order to get the Marine to a holistic being? It, it's cold. It's a great question. I think uh, yes, yes. It'll be it'll be coaching. It'll be mentoring. We we see this as conversations having bet between Marines uh, within within their peer groups as well. We we like to see those that are making the positive decisions, coach those who maybe are going down that wrong path, to say who are in that six to seven six, six out of seven. We want to be able to get that seventh guy, that seventh that seventh guy or gal, uh, and, and say hey look. Let's, uh, let me coach you down to the, to the right side of this. Uh, certainly be from, from seniors to, to juniors. From family members. You know, we want, we want family members, you know, when they, when they see, when they see a, uh, a, a Marine going down that wrong path, to say, hey, Marine, I'm part of what you earned here. You know, the respect of this family, what's, good for, what, what's right for this family. Let me, let me coach you down to the right side. Protect it. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, General, good morning, and uh, thank you for being here, and thank you for your service. Um, it seems that most of, uh, you know, protecting what you earn is uh, geared toward um, the uh, personal responsibility of good order and discipline. Uh, but when I see that, and I hear that, and uh, I am uh, just 18 months removed from the uh, Marine Corps and uh, uh, retiree, uh, and uh, my concern is uh, basically does uh, protect what you've earned translate into service members transitioning and reintegration, uh, reintegrating to uh, civilian life? Uh, that uh, protecting and, um, and taking what you've earned in that aspect as when a service member uh, uh, does an honorable service and gets out, then what is that quality of life going to be for that service member once they get out, because there seems to be a huge gap on once they finish their TAP or TRS up into the point of uh, them becoming a uh, viable uh, civilian that has the resources and the services that they need to be a productive citizen. Thank you. Well, thank you. Great, great question. And, uh, and I'm glad you brought in the tie-in to our transition readiness because this, this, is, this is being incorporated in everything we do within our Marine Corps community services. It's being incorporated into how we try to transition our Marines out. So they're going to be getting this message. And do I, would I hope that this continues on when they transition out and whether they, get, they, get, uh, they, they, can, they, they need help through the, uh, the, the VA or they continue, they continue through... Uh, other links to the Marine Corps, we want them continually reminded of this. We want them continually reminded of this and use this as a conversation to, to not only continue to encourage the right behavior, but also, as you mentioned, this should help inspire them to try to find those resources that are available for them. And we need to, and we need to do the best job we can to make sure we, we present that before they get out and continue to do that once they get out as well. So thank you for that question. Morning, sir. Hi, Deb. Um, are you bringing this to the spouses as well? We are. We are. We are. We're, we're bringing this to the spouses. So we're bringing and th through our family readiness programs. We're 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 embracing the entire family on this. So because we we think this is this is going to be a message. This is going to be a campaign that'll resonate not just with the Marines, but it'll resonate with the family members as well. Not only to help influence the Marines to do to uh, to do the right thing, but also family members. Family members as well. I mean, this, this I think, will have a broad, a broad appeal. Excellent. And then the, another question is, um, if we can get some of that swag for our Thanksgiving dinner, because we'll have a couple thousand going through there. You'll get it. You'll get it. I got the public affairs officer here, and uh, we'll have it out there. And, and really, if you're going to have any form that you're going to have to get together, if you want some, to be able to, to put some, some of this message out, we'd, like, we'd love to be able to have a table out there that has some of this stuff and every time you get, you get uh, community leaders together, every time you get parts of the community together, every time you get Marines together as well. Morning, sir. Thank Hi, you again for leading this program. It's certainly essential. We all recognize that protecting what you earn also applies to the overall economy of our community. 
Therefore, the question to you is, do you have any objections to the individual citizens carrying these bumper stickers on their various vehicles so that as a community, we support, protect what you earn? Not only do we don't have a problem with it, I encourage it. Uh, I, we, we, we want this throughout the community. We want Marines to be able to get constantly reminded of, of what of, of the positive de decision making that need, they need to be making on a daily basis, on a, on, a, on a daily basis to protect all the things that they've earned. You can help us do that. that, that that'd be awesome. On behalf of the city government, we will pledge to you, we'll become a distribution site at the Center for Public Safety and also here at City Hall. So we will get a supply and probably by the first of the year, we'll have a large supply. So any citizen who would like to acquire one of these free they can come to one of these city locations. Is that acceptable, sir? Very much so. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, General, if you please. Um, I know this program just got started, but are there gonna be mechanisms in place as we move forward that if we do see the decrease, how is local, local law enforcement gonna work with the base to see that this program is working? Well, it, it's, it's by forums like this. It's by the close partnership we already have with, with law enforcement. We're, we're going to continue to adapt this program. Uh, we're going to continue to bring our fo focus groups together. We're, we're going to also look at, at, uh, at, at, at metrics. You know, are we starting to de decrease, let's say, alcohol-related incidents? Are we starting to, is this starting to resonate? It could take some time for us to see some of these metrics. I mean, this is something that that goes down to the core of the individual. Uh, we, we think it's already having some media effects. It's gonna take some time for us to have the kind of statistical pieces of this. And it's hard, it's, it's always gonna be hard to be able to trace um, any kind of statistical change to one campaign. We, we like to think that we're, 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 we're attacking force preservation from, so many, from some, several different angles. This is a significant piece of that. Uh, and, and, and we think it's going to work. We think it's going to it's going to positively resonate. Good morning, General. Once again, and um, as I sit here, one of the thoughts that I have with the family dynamics being a real uh, play in the, in this whole campaign, will you have anything to assist in the school curriculum? Because I think this whole mindset of this paradigm shift of this change is a very good effort and campaign that you guys have started. But I do know with the family dynamics, that needs to resonate throughout in the family and with the children. And is there something being done in the DOD school system to help with this effort as well? It is, it is. We've, we've already started uh, moving this into the schools and the, and the principals and teachers are, 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 are very happy with the program as well. Um, this resonates with students. Um, the, and I think that, and, and the teachers are using this, this with their students. Hey, protect what you've earned. You know, you've, you've gotten this far in your academic, academic career here. Don't mess it up by breaking rules, by making, by making those mistakes that, that, uh, that, that, you know, adolescents at that stage may be prone to try to make. So we're, we're expanding this. And that's where, and that's where I think you're going to see Gen 2. Uh, Gen 2 even make a, a stronger effort. We're going to see, hey, look, we, let, let's try, let, let's, let's make even a greater effort to schools. Um, let's make a, a greater effort to other, other parts of the, of the supporting establishment that we have. Are there other questions for the general? General, is there any comments you would like to make? Well, just that I, I want to thank you all for being here, and I want to thank the chamber for putting this forum together. Um, and, and thank you. For, what, for how much you've embraced this program. Thank you in advance for all you're doing to help support it as well. Um, I'm, we're asking the community to keep this in the conversation. Um, we, we're asking you to be, be supportive on, 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 on having this get as much mass exposure out into the community. Um, it's, it, it's important to us. It's important, it's important to our combat readiness. It's important, it's important to be able to preserve our most precious asset, our Marines. Um, but a program that I think is going to expand. I mean, I, I, see, I see Protect What You've Earned, again, adding to the, to the lexicon, almost like pay it forward. You know, we talk about pay it forward, and, uh, and if you go back to the, which is now something we use all the time, um, Protect What You've Earned. I, I think it's going to resonate. Uh, and, and, and what we, of course, we want you to know that it started here first. 
and we're very proud of it here. And the fact that it's been, it's been embraced by uh, CoreWide, and, and who knows where it goes from there, because there's so many ways that this can be applied to try to help, right now, to help our core, but help in society as well. Well, it's my uh, joy and duty to wrap up this meeting, and I do want to thank the general and his staff and Second Meth for everything that they've done. Um, and congratulations on initiating a program that's had such an immediate positive response and is expanding beyond the local realm here. Um, I know for our community it's important that we see these efforts supported and consistent uh, you know, behind the gate and in front of the gate as well. Um, I know I can speak for myself and several other, you know, other business owners and residents in our community that we don't just value having the base installations here, we value the Marines that serve on them, so it's very important. So, hurrah, and good job taking care of our guys. We want to support that as much as we can. On behalf of the Jacksonville Onslow Chamber of Commerce, thank you for attending and viewing this forum. I'd like to recognize a couple of elected officials who snuck in on us. We have Commissioner Millionaire Williams here with us. Thank you for attending. Thank you so much, and I'll take this opportunity very quickly. As uh, Richard Woodruff spoke about the city and that I'm here for, as a county representative, I know the sentiments would be the same for us to join the efforts and stand behind this because it needs to come outside of the gates into our civilian population. So thank you. Absolutely. We also have um, a school board member here, Bob Williams. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you one more time to all of our sponsors for today, Duke Energy Progress, the Jacksonville Daily News, the City of Jacksonville, and Media Services. This concludes today's program. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.